volume. How's it going, everyone? Here's your favorite sorcerer, the Bronze Dawn OG of Sorcery. And I'm here with uh, my uh, good friend, student, and also teacher for the Grail of the Serpent, Carl Miller. He teaches meditation. He's a very capable teacher. Um, I have all trust in his abilities to transfer whatever is necessary for you to become better at that and to become a good magician. Um, and I wanted to do a new video with him because um, there's so much to share and you guys absolutely have to check out what he has to do with that. Okay. So first of all, welcome, Carl. How's it going? Um, and my first question is, why are you so good at teaching that stuff? Because you are. Why do you think you... Um, I've seen your transformation it was phenomenal. And why do you think you in particular picked that up so fast? Well, I think I, I think I picked it up mainly because I come from a family of teachers anyways. Um, my dad is a, a teacher uh, in music and um, many other things. And uh, I have grandparents on both sides of the families that were Teach. I got cousins that are teachers. They teach uh, in high schools and in colleges. Uh, so I've always been surrounded with that kind of an atmosphere of teaching and and learning as a student. Um, when I was a, when I was a child, um, that's kind of how my dad taught me. You know, um, it made me a. Good, I had to be a good student. I didn't have a choice. You know what I mean? I mean, I had a choice, but there was consequences. So I preferred to try to do my best at it. You know, um, so it that just kind of comes naturally for me, um, uh, trying to share with other people. And, and I really get more out of it than I, I, I feel like I get more out of it than they do. Um, just because yeah, I don't know how, how to explain that. I, I just know that when I, you know, when I can see somebody is getting something and then they come back and tell me that, you know, uh, they've had some kind of positive change or they're showing, showing improvement, then, you know, you know, how could you not, how could you feel bad at all? Like, how could you not be happy? Right. So, um, you know, I get so much more out of it, you know? Okay, great. So in your estimation, what are the qualities that make a good teacher and, and what are the qualities that make a good student? A good teacher to me is somebody who is also a good student because they, they go hand in hand. It's also somebody who understands that, every single person is an individual and the way that you might convey one, uh, some kind of information to one person, you can still convey the same information to somebody else, but you might have to deliver it differently in order for them to comprehend it or get it depending on their personality. And I've had a lot of good teachers and I've had a lot of shitty teachers and usually the shitty ones, they teach one way. They're very rigid. I'm not saying that they're bad at what they do. I'm just saying they're rigid. So not everybody grasps it. So if, for me, I've learned that to reach the widest audience I can, um, I'll try to explain the same thing 10 different ways so everyone can try to get it, you know, because some people, everyone uh, has their own personalities and they get things a little bit differently. And I've noticed that with myself, too, when I was being taught in different kinds of things uh, uh, throughout my life. So that's that's what I think. So in an ideal scenario. A student decides to enter your class. Um, what would be the experience that, that you would like the student to have? What what do you aim for? Well, first of all, I want them to be. I want to catch their attention. I want them to be interested. I want to. I want you know. I, I'm assuming that anybody who joins the class is already interested in the subject. They have some kind of preconceived idea of what it's going to be like, and. And then what I want to do is I want to challenge them. You know, I, I want them, I want to challenge them. However, I want them to have an experience that, that changes them. You know what I mean? Something that they couldn't get anywhere else that they were able to finally have some kind of internal change or whatever that might be. I want to, I want to give them the change and then I want to continuously challenge them. In fact, it's almost, in one way, it's it, it's good to, to I wouldn't say frustrate students, but it's good to push them 
um, because when they when they go through with that, they realize how much potential they actually had in the beginning that they didn't know they had. You know, um, so my main thing is to give people an experience. You know, we do a lot of we do some lecturing in the classes. You know, obviously, I got to explain what we're doing and, you know, uh, questions and answers. But my main point is to get people into a different state than they are every day so they can start having experiences that normally they don't have. Right. Or maybe they've had a glimpse of it once, but we're going to sit in it for a while. And um, sometimes that can be uncomfortable. And that's the whole point. That's the experience, too. You know. So we got to make clear that what the, 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 the student is supposed to learn is obviously to to use their, let's say, psychic abilities. Right. Like, how do you become psychic? How do you how do you become capable of entering altered states at will and and how do you basically um use the the use a different skill set than the mundane one uh, in your mind right so um how did you figure out those methodologies because still yeah um you you went through let's say my training programs i don't know whatever else you did uh but how did you find your uh confidence with these things um, well, a lot of trial and error, a lot of practice, a lot of sitting there and trying to, you know, I, I spent a lot of time sitting and trying to do it on my own. Obviously, of course, through your practices, I've learned so much and, and many different tricks and techniques. Um, I have other friends and other people I've studied with, and I work with all different kinds of people. So I'll learn a different, it's like the same thing, but I'll learn a different technique from one person and then maybe I wasn't getting it totally and somebody else will say, well, here, why don't you try this? And then that worked for me for whatever, whether it was a breathing technique or some kind of visualization I didn't know about or a mantra or there, there, there's so many different techniques. And then I never, the thing with me is I'm like obsessed. Okay. I get obsessed with what I enjoy and I started to get obsessed about meditation, sorcery, energy, how my mind works, how my, uh, you know, how your energy system works, you know, how do we, you know, I see these videos of these, these yogis and these people doing this superhuman things. Right. And I say, well, how are they doing that? You know, and I can't let it go. So I'll just, I'll research, I'll look, I'll look and any information I can get, I'll go with it. And then I am kind of an extreme person by nature. So when I do something, I end, I, I tend to do it a little more than like maybe a normal person would um, take the time to do, you know what I mean? Um, you know, some people might sit there and try to meditate for a half an hour, you know, and then I'll say, well, I'm, I'm going to try to sit as long as I can, maybe, you know, four hours, maybe all night until the morning. Um, you know, how long do you chant your mantra? If you do that kind of stuff for, you know, for a hundred times or 10,000 times. And so I'll try to do those. I'll try to push my system until something either breaks or, you know, opens up. And, and, um, and that, that's like kind of how I've, uh, opened a lot of things up, um, when, I, when I've done it. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's really interesting that you're saying that because, um, that's my experience as well. It's like, uh, it's like an obsession and it, it, it's almost something that even if, so, if, if the world would try to stop you from it, you would still find a way of doing it. And, and, and that's really the desire that has to be behind it. That's the only way to really develop those, those powers in a sense, right? I mean, I'm, I'm sure it applies to many, many other things as well. You know, I, I guess I would assume it, 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 it applies to any other goal that is hard to accomplish. It has to be like an inherent motivation, you see? That's also why I'm like, uh, kind of like, uh, why I've stopped to motivate people to learn this stuff because that, the, the, the motivation could never come from me. It has to be inherent in the student. And if the motivation is actually there, which is nothing but the desire to develop um, like psychic abilities or whatever the potential of their own mind is, then no matter what the world would do or throw at them, they would still do it. So the motivation has to be there. And that's that's a big point. That's actually, that, that's, that's the key point, absolutely. And uh, so once the motivation is there, there will be an obsession and, and 
I'm sure it was similar with you and uh, I've experienced the same thing and I've, I've, I've heard this reoccur over and over and over again. The people that come to magic and, and really do what it takes to develop their, their mind and the psychic abilities, they almost have given up on life. Not because they're like depressed or not capable of living life in this world, but it's almost as they, they, they're, they're done with the illusion. It's almost like, like, like a certain evolutionary stage that, that, is, that is reached where it's basically, yeah, I understand this, this carnal world is, is what it is. It's, 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 it's like an illusion. It's like, like an animalistic existence. But now my other part, my, my higher self is ready to shine through. And I guess what I'm trying to say here is basically that you have to almost have given up on mundane life and then you develop a new one. Like, was that your experience as well? Yeah, I mean, I've went through a lot of different stages. And one thing I can say, those thoughts constantly are in my mind. I know that one day, the you know, I'm doing, I'm running businesses, I'm building stuff, I'm doing lots of things because I got plans, that, things that I need to do before I die. However, I do know that there's going to be a time in my life where I'm going to drop all of that because it's it's in a way there's much more other work to be done. Um, but until then, this is training for me. This is the way I look at it as training. I mean, that's the way I look at it now. There was a point where I was depressed and, um, you know, in, in addiction and things like that, because you're you're looking at the world and you're like, what the what the fuck is the point of this? This is stupid. Why, you know, and a lot, I, I see a, like a lot of people who have really good potential end up turning to substances because it is a temporary escape into, and, and yeah, they might have some cool experiences. However, they always come back and then they're going to start to rely on that over and over and it turns into a horrible thing. Right. And so a lot of those people, if they're lucky to live and get out of it and they do, uh, some of them like myself will start searching for for the same thing in a different way and they find it through you know usually occult magic um sorcery and things like that and then when they get a taste of that it's almost like a new addiction and honestly you can't stop because it's like uh, I, i'll never forget the first spell i ever did that worked i knew i think i sent you a message about it i it blew my it changed my world that day i didn't know uh it was just like i was mind blown you know what i mean and then so after that, I was like, I could never go back ever, ever, ever go back to what I was, you know, and, and, and since then, it's just, I've been on the, you know, running, you know, I'm like, what's next? What's the next thing? And then you get the next power and you're like, okay, that's cool. I'm bored. What's next? Let's go. Let's, let's get the next one. And and that's the way I, uh, that's my mentality today. You know, um, I'm, I'm greedy in a way I'm spiritually, uh, greedy, you know, and I think that's a good thing though. You know, it's not, I know. Yeah there's lots of different people out there and they have different viewpoints on how things should be. But, you know, honestly, anybody following this path should know that, that you need to be greedy with your spirituality. You need to get what you can get. You need to um, experience as much as you can and get as much power as you can. Because that's the point that I think that's the point we're here, you know, to, to have the most intense experiences you can, you know, mm -hmm. but maybe, you know, have control over it as well, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny that you say addiction and all that stuff, because I've seen that again and again and again and again, that like there, there's nothing else for, 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 let's say somebody's an addict, somebody has issues with substance abuse, whatever that might be. But what you can see is that at, once they, once they find genuine and, and authentic spirituality, this all of a sudden ha gives them the power to drop the the uh, the other addiction. It's it's because I mean uh, uh, substance abuse is nothing but the, the you know uh, a temporary relief of uh, the torment in their own mind, right, and and and, and emotions or whatever, right. And then when a person finds spirituality and a way to escape that without intoxicating themselves, without hurting themselves, but still having the ability. To, to take a break, right? And at the same time, like explore this other part of themselves. They, they have the experience of, of being in the world, but not of it. And that kind of like, that finally is um, what gives them the strength 
to face life without this this buffer of 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 of, of the substance, right? And I've 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 heard this so many times that spirituality is is really the only thing that can that can replace the the the, the, the comfort of the drug, right? And um, yeah, and uh, absolutely. What also, yeah, and, and it's such a such a powerful pull, and everybody everybody who's supposed to do this knows this. I mean, at the end of the day, in my in my life, the vision of of sharing these experiences in, in the other worlds and helping others access their uh, this 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 higher self uh, uh, as well. That was the only thing that was keeping me alive. That like that vision, it was actually a vision that I received in meditation. Like there was no, nothing that had any meaning in my life. I could have died right then and there and, and I, could, I wouldn't have been sad about it at all because like, what the fuck, right? But this, this, this feeling of being able to help others explore that and to, 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 to share that in, 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 in uh, I don't know, in a collective, that was the only thing that was, that was keeping me going. You know what I mean? And I think, um there are people and i think that's the at the end of the day that's that's the destiny that we all have because the the species is going to enter or our species is going to enter a higher level where we're at a higher level of consciousness and then like i don't know telepathic communication whatever is going to be there right but this is uh, this is something that i think a lot of people have to do and the more they do it the better so I guess what I'm trying to ask here, or to, to, to throw the ball back in your court, um, what, is, what, what is your motivation? Why do you do that? Like, what, what do you think is the bigger vision? Because obviously this is only the very beginning. It's like a seed that's planted and you're gonna, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be teaching and influencing more and, more and more and more people. And also what I wanna say, like teaching, always sounds like maybe because we're used to that from school it's like i'm the i'm the teacher i'm here you're here that's that's not what what, what that means teacher means um basically I'm, I'm i'm passing on the torch essentially that's that's my understanding of being a teacher so back to that question what is your what is your vision for that what do you want to do like what is what, what would you really be happy to see in let's say five ten years from now it's funny you said i i i've had a couple of visions in meditation that were undeniable in the beginning of this path. Um, um, and there's a reason that I, my, my career now and my skill is, is in carpentry and construction is because the, the vision was building a physical place, temple, retreat, whatever you want to call it, some kind of a place. I, I, I had a vision. It wasn't super clear, but I saw the layout of it. And then as I progressed through this, um, I've been told by other people who are, um, you know, clairvoyant and that who have looked into me and they've said, yeah, you're going to be doing this in the future. This is what you came here to do. I said, okay. And then now with the teaching, um, I feel like maybe down the road, I, I want to teach the next generation of, of, of kids before they're indoctrinated into any belief system or society. And I want to do similar to how they would do it, like the Shaolin Monk Temple, only for magic, and to start them young and mold them into powerful beings, right? Um, and it's going to take a lot of resources and, 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 and networking to do that. But that's kind of like my dream. If I can make that running before I go, I'm good. I'm fine. Let me go. And that's, that's kind of, that's what keeps it. That's like my big down the road thing that keeps me going because honestly once i got into this and i kind of seen the world for it was i'm like just even building my own business doesn't fulfill me anymore it's just a business it's just money it is like it there's no end to it it's just it is, it's just going to keep doing the same cycle right that's just what it does so i was like it had to be something bigger and sitting on a rocking chair when i'm an old man on some you know it's like i can't it's just not in my life you know um it used to be i used to think that that was what you did you know but now there's no way absolutely no way and i want here's how i know when i've truly succeeded is when i have students that end up being way more powerful than me if i can do that um then you know i'm happy yeah it's interesting that you say that because i mean 
um, as you know, I'm, I'm very much into astrology, right? And when we look at astrology, what's going on right now is we, we have different phases. And these phases are connected to different element, uh, elements, right? So we're coming out of the, or we, we're already out of the, of the earth phase, you know, I mean, the, the element earth, right? And since 2020, and we all saw what was going on in 2020, we're now in the, um, we're now fully in the, in the earth element, right? And when we look at the, sorry, in, in the air element and the qualities of this time, and, and time can have a quality just for the viewers here, time can have like an energetic underlying quality that affects everything at a, at a mass scale, mostly human consciousness. And through that, you know, actions at a, at a scale. So the earth phase is, 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 is characterized by, by rigid structures. Everything is rather solid and, and, and clear, right? It's like a clear structures. It's, it's, it's like, it seems like it's not changing, right? And now we're moving into air and air has the quality of being ever changing. There's nothing but change. There's constant fluidity and all of that stuff, right? And uh, everything is becoming more and more digitized, which is basically like massless and super fast, transferred at the speed of light and probably even faster with quantum computing and stuff like that, right? So everything is changing so fast. And with that also the information transfer and our existence in other planes, so to speak, the, the, the astral plane is becoming as solid and, and, and concrete as let's say the physical existence was in the, the, the earlier stages. When I say that, the, 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 the cyberspace is nothing but a representation of, of the astral plane. Yeah, it, the, the internet itself, is nothing but a but a but a let's say physical representation of the astral plane. It's a combination of emotions, thoughts, and all of that stuff, right? So, it's in in a way, it's becoming much much easier to to interact with these other dimensions. And most people just choose to do that in terms of cyberspace. But also, it would be much easier to communicate with spiritual forces. You know, the spiritual forces, of course, also use the the the, the, the cyberspace as a, as an interface, right? But the bottom line is what I'm trying to say is essentially in the past, you didn't need internal solidity that much because the external world seemed to be very rather solid. Let's say the institutions were rather solid, like nation states or something like that. That was stable. You know, like no matter what happens, the government's going to be there, not because it's going to help you, but at least like you know that the government's going to still exist or your country is still going to exist as it is and stuff like that right so uh, and and corporations they're all very strong and structured now everything is is changing every day you know see the, like a, a a trend changes from one week to another a mega trend so what we need more than anything in this this new phase is internal stability because the external world is changing so fast and this internal stability can only exist if we, if we basically explore these things that you just described or I uh, talked about earlier. Basically, how do I control my own mind? Like I gotta find refuge within myself, within my higher self, within my deeper self, whatever you wanna call that. Otherwise I'm gonna go mad, I'm gonna go crazy because they're, they're like, you need stability somewhere. If it's an external religion, you can be internally all over the fucking place, but you know, okay, 10 commandments, this is what I need to follow. Nowadays, there's no 10, 10 commandments. There's, there's 100 commandments for every single person out there, right? And everybody's free to choose their own personal little, you know, whatever. There are probably, I don't know how many genders are out there these days, right? You know, and I'm, hey, no hate, okay? Whoever, the, anyone can do whatever the fuck they want. And that's another quality of this time. But in order to deal with that without going mad, you got to find that stability within yourself. So that's just an observation, but what is your opinion about that? No, absolutely. And, you know, as you said, as you mentioned about the quality of the elements in the, in the time, in the, in the macrocosmic viewpoint, um, one of the things I always go deeply to into in the class, in my teachings with the class and with my students is the microcosmic version of that. Um, how the elements behave within you. And I always make sure that 
uh, you know, I, I try to do fundamentals as much as possible because it's the most powerful thing. And I want every one of my students to um, understand that I, I have a good, listen, I don't have a degree in anything of this, right? But I have a good understanding of Ayurveda and of, of yoga and, and of how the human energy system works. Um, and it's the same for everybody. I mean, it's balanced different, but it, the, it, the principles are the same. So I, I want to teach people, and this is, a, and we did this in the last class yesterday. I, I show you know, there's, um, in the yoga system, uh, there, there's five values. They call it values. Values means movement. Okay. And, and you take your prana and you, you, uh, split it into five different aspects. Okay. And they've, this has already been researched for thousands of years and there's five different ways the energy moves throughout your body and there's different mudras and things you can hold to experience that. And we went through each one of them and we allowed, you know, everyone was able to sit there and f feel the change of the direction of the energy move, the quality of it, how it affected your organs, how your mind. Now, now each student, depending on how aware they are, might only just feel something shift, but however, continuing that practice over and over again, eventually they're going to gain mastery over their own system. Because if you know how to balance the five elements in your body, you know how to master the universe. At that point, there's nothing that can stop you. Um, essentially, it's just all five elements. So understanding the nature of those, and I was, just, I was explaining to him, how does this relate to sorcery? Okay, well, if you can manipulate the air and the fire element within you and change the way the nature of your thoughts are going, then if you can connect to somebody else, you can also manipulate their elements and change the way their thoughts are going. And essentially, you're doing a very fundamental level, but it's the most important because if you can master your own, you don't need a doctor at that point. You don't need a, a therapist. You don't need anything because you know the correct positions to hold your fingers in or the correct breathing technique. And eventually, and I know that this can be done because now I do it, is you don't need any of that. You can do it only with your mind. You can just turn it on and turn it off and you can turn all these things off in your mind. One of the, one of the practices I'm starting to do now is I'm starting to, I'm thinking about taking down my, my, uh, temple, my altar and all of it and having a blank wall and starting to do rituals that way. It's, it's actually a little intimidating when I think about it because I start, I realize how many attachments I have, you know, even when it comes down to like, oh, my, my, my dagger and you know, my, my skull and a few other things that I like to use, you know, and they all are consecrated and have energy on them, but I know that that came from me. Right. So why do I really need them? So that's like the next level of it, you know, and I want to be able to teach students that through this meditation, this inner awareness practicing that we're doing, that eventually they're going to have the confidence because they're going to be like, man, you know, well, I got anxiety today. Oh, that's because, you know, my one value is out of uh, balance. We'll do this, balance it out. Boom. You just didn't have to go look for uh, someone else to fix that for you. Now you're got yourself together. And I mean, and we can go on and on about the implications of what you could do with that. I mean, there's so many things you can do with that, you know, um, and it's fun, man. Once people get, and I love to see the expressions on people when they see the shift, when they experience it, because then it's like this light bulb comes on inside them. And I'll mention something like I talked to you about, like, well, you can do it to somebody else. If you, and they're like, oh, they get excited. And I said, yeah, I love it. I said, now you see what I'm talking about. Now you're seeing the, the possibilities that you had. And we're only dealing with just a few fundamentals right now. You know, you can expound on that over and over and over again. And um, it, it, to me, I think I explained to a student yesterday, I said, if you can, depending on mindset, I know you like to talk about mindset. So do I. So it's just like, here's a mindset. Somebody goes into a house or a building they know has got, it's haunted, right? Got a lot of, uh, energies in there and usually their mindset is okay there's some demon there's some energy it's negative it's gonna try to attack me and i would say well master the elements within yourself and then understand that that energy is nothing but a combination of elements itself in a certain way go in there and look at it as a unique combination of elements a different flavor soup than you are you know i'm a, this i got these ingredients mixed this way it's got that way if you can look at it like that, there is no fear anymore. It's just geometry and you just handle it, you know, and it's just, it just changes the game, you know, and, and I love to see the reactions on people's faces when they kind of get that. And, and that's what like drives me to like, just keep, 
you know, doing it and learning myself. I'm not gonna sit here and say I know everything. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm always a student, you know, I'm always a student. There's always somebody out there who's, you know, on, on, a, on a higher level everywhere. You know, that's the way I see it, you know, because the universe is infinite, it never stops. Yeah, and there's so many, so many profound things here that you said. And I just want to pick a, a couple of points and go deeper with those. Okay. So uh, the first one that you that you mentioned, I think, is uh, this, this um, magic is the mind. Right now, it's 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 not just in our thoughts, but as the thoughts begin to affect our energy, and since everything is interconnected, meaning as within, so without, the beginning of any magic is being able to influence oneself. And then through a non-physical connection, through whatever an energy field or whatever that is, the force, we can affect something that's outside of us, right? And this is so profound because um, especially uh, occultists these days, you know, like the, the, the first thing they, they, they see is um, practices that are, you know, ceremonial in, in the hermetic tradition of ceremonial. Right. So it's, it's very like these rituals are so fancy, you know, like robes, this and that and the other and all that shit, which has its place and its value. But unless you have the ability that you just mentioned, none of that's going to do anything. It's literally just a, 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 a fucking circus. That's what it is. Right. And the funny thing is, as soon as you realize what makes magic work, you don't need these things anymore. So it's more or less a tradition. Uh, that 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 has very little value so that's one thing and and people always ask about this evocation you know how do i get this evocation to work you know how do i get this spell to work how do i make psychic seduction work what is the technique or what ingredients do i need for the spell at the end of the day all of the all of the elements exist within you all of, the, all of the gods, as they say in Hinduism, all of, or in Yoga, all of the gods reside in, within your own body. So if you can explore yourself, it, this equates the exploration of the entire universe, the subtle as well as the, as the solid universes. And the permeation of this universe allows you to recreate the universe. And that is really what we're doing. So by exploring yourself, you're exploring the universe. It's not that you're just sitting there with your eyes closed. This is what people say that don't meditate and have ever done it, right? Like, what are you, what are you doing there, man? You're just sitting there with your eyes closed. It's a waste of time. Bro, you have no idea what I'm doing with, in my mind, right? So this is the first thing. So if you want to learn magic, you better learn how to control your own energies. And the only way to do that is to sit down, close your eyes, and explore this mechanism, this body-mind mechanism that we have, right? That's the first thing, very profound. Number two, number two, I think a very, very important point that you mentioned was um, the, uh, the magic being made possible through self-mastery allows, um, allows us to see ourselves as, as part of something greater. And, uh, what is your what is your experience with um with the following because i hear that a lot from other people i've experienced it myself where it's basically the urge to do a spell oftentimes comes from a lack of self-control so as soon as the self-control kicks in the need to do the to do the spell is, is often not there anymore it's not that you don't do spells anymore but it's it becomes way more important to fix the self that it is to fix the outside world. Well, is that your experience or what do you think about that? Yeah, um, that has been in my experience. I, I, the way, I guess the way I look at it is you still did the spell. You just didn't have to go through the ritual of doing it. It just happened. It happened internally. I mean, it always happens internally, but I think like some, like a lot of times it's, you know, a lot of times when I really want to do a spell, it's because there was maybe a, a fear, uh, uh, a lack of preparation in the past caught up with me, and now I'm scrambling to try to fix it. Right? A lot of people do that, and and and, and you know, so they're like, oh, you know, uh, they didn't they didn't realize that maybe they. Uh, I don't know what's a good example. 
whatever, let's just say like money management or something, right? Uh, they, didn't, they don't know how to manage their money. They got poor habits and then eventually they're in the hole and then they're sitting there. Oh, I, I got to do a money spell. I got to do a money spell right now and it'll fix everything. And it just doesn't work like that. You know, um, I know because I've tried, it doesn't work like that. You know, but it's almost like when you let go of giving a fuck about the spell or if it's going to happen, like it automatically, like the internal process happens and then the universe reacts to that, you know, or it gives you uh, so like a lot of times if I felt the threat when it, it would be an external threat, but it, it always was a manifestation of something that I had deep inside of me that I was afraid of that I didn't want to look at in myself. And when I, when I was able to accept that within myself, the external threat, somehow it always, the circumstances change and it just doesn't have to, I don't have to deal with it. Right. Because I dealt with it here. If I tried to stop, if I tried to suppress it here, I would have had to dealt with it physically and it would have been not as a good result. And that's usually what I see. I mean, that's kind of what I notice with most people is they're never dealing with their own shit. So they're always running into physical conflicts all the time, you know, and because if you make them shut their eyes, they'll go insane and they'll cry and they'll scream because they're terrified of themselves, right? They're terrified of just parts of them that they don't think should be there, you know, and it's the same with me and anybody, I believe, you know, uh, there's been times where, um, I mean, even recently, there's stuff that I thought, I thought I conquered all my darknesses so far, right? No, man, there's always something. You know, the, and I've noticed this too, and I tell this to my students, you know, when you start doing these uh, meditation exercises, and don't think, you know, a lot of people think meditation is this gentle thing where you sit, you know what I mean? And, and everything's all, you know, flowers around you. Okay. I mean, the, I don't like how this new age has, has, has promoted this stuff. And, and don't get me wrong. It's, you can be very peaceful. You can go to anything with meditation, but specifically for what we're doing, you want energy, you want to have power, you know, you want... You, People always talk about Kundalini. They don't even know what it is. I said, I'll show you how to activate your Kundalini. It's very specific processes that would do that. And are you ready for that? Are you ready for all your light bulbs to light up? Can you handle that kind of energy? Because what's going to happen is that energy doesn't decipher good or bad. It's just raw energy. And if you have all kinds of programs in you that are suppressed and they're negative, they're all going to be amplified. That's why a lot of people who get into like powerful practices where they're dealing with big energies, they lose their fucking minds because they never did the inner work before they started playing with the big stuff. And that's why I want to teach people the fundamentals first to go in see what's going on within you and then build that energy. And then when you have the energy and you don't have a bunch of fucked up thoughts throwing it everywhere, then you can direct it and do, you know, awesome things, you know? Um, I don't know if I got off topic or not, but that's just, Kind of what came out. Oh, uh, Frank, you're off. Your uh, your mic went off. I'm muted. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. I hear you. Um, yeah. The what also I think needs to be understood is that um, there's a higher intellect that we can all access. You know. So. I'm completely convinced, and, and there's a reason why I'm, I'm convinced of it, because I experience it every single day, multiple times, that there is a higher intelligence that moves through all of us. It's almost like a, like a greater intellect, call it the mind of God or whatever. You know, I'm, I, used to call, uh, I used to call my meditation program the unbounded mind. You call yourself the cosmic mind. I guess, like, I don't know. They're both, I guess, um, accurate descriptions of, of what we're trying, trying to describe there, right? So we all have access to a greater intellect that, that heals, that teaches, and that increases our own abilities all at the same time. That happens automatically as we, as we connect to this ocean of consciousness that we're all part of. It happens automatically. So the biggest obstacle is really the, the, the thought or the idea that we have to figure everything out linearly and through our own conscious efforts which is oftentimes not possible it's almost like you're you're cutting yourself off from your 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 ability to access higher knowledge it's like nowadays if, if you use everybody has a phone these days and let's say you're around and you shut off your ability to connect to the internet with your phone 
that's literally how most people use their mind. It's literally just the phone with all of those apps. But what? How much can you do with those apps if you're not connected to the internet, really? Right? Like it's 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 useless. Then mm -hmm. it's it's functioning at maybe one percent of its of its capabilities. Okay. Now, I'm not trying to say that when you when you start meditating, you turn into the superhuman and you become limitless. No, that's not what I'm saying. However, it's undeniable. And once you have an authentic connection to source every single day whenever you do your meditation it's almost as if this smaller mind that we that we identify with it's like rational it's constantly like searching and trying to find patterns it stops and then at the same time a greater mind begins to fill us and it's actually all always there it's just like in the background mm -hmm. and we become aware of this of this ocean that we're all part of it's almost like this energy is flowing through everything and, and, and it's just temporarily blocked through our thought process, through our attachments. And the solutions in our life are an outgrowth or they're a, a result of us being able to let the energy flow through us again. So when I, when I experience a problem in my life that I can't solve, if that makes sense, what I do is I understand that it must be an energy block within myself, right? We're not supposed to experience problems because life is nothing but a flow of, of energy. It's one big system of energy. So when we encounter a problem in the outside world, it must begin within ourselves because it is as within, so without. So where within myself, within my own energy body, and oftentimes just asking that question shows you where in your body you carry that, that block. Letting go of that will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Of course, there will be mundane actions that you will have to take, but that's just, that's just a physical expression of what ha has already happened energetically. So the meditation allows you to connect to a greater mind, which we, we're all part of. It's one field of energy or one ocean of energy. And the smaller mind that is attached, that, 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 that tries to think linearly and all of that stuff, has very little information, it goes into the background and instead this big infinite mind begins to, to, to roll through you, which is the thing that we're all gonna to return to. And the, the solutions just come, the answers just come. It's almost as if you're, you're finally able to connect the, bar, the dots, you know, and you perceive from a bigger picture. And, um, even from a productivity standpoint, if you just want to take it there, if you want to keep it very, very mundane, you know, you just want to become more productive, you want to become a better, whatever, better leader, better, better business person, better, better, whatever your, your choice, you know, is, you will benefit from 100%. You'll become a better blank, whatever, right? So what is your experience with that? Do you agree with that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. I've, I've had, I've had some pretty wild experiences, um, as far as lose, um, losing my personality for a period of time. Um, and like losing who I am. And when I get in those states, um, a lot of it can't really be explained in words. It's, you almost got to take people there because it's, uh, it is uh, a higher intelligence. It, it, it is an intelligence because we're nothing but a, a small expression of that intelligence. I've come to understand that as well. And, you know, the most of the ancient traditions that the, the spiritual sciences, you know, um, the yoga, um, um, monks, um, any of the uh, ancient shamanistic, they all... All of them have some kind of word or expression for that universal consciousness, whatever that is, right? And definitely for me, when I can connect to that, I find out very fast where the block is. Um, especially now that I'm carrying more energy through my system than I ever have. Um, it's almost just like if you've got a high powered hose and then you kink it, you know, and the water's pressurizing there you'll know it's there you'll know it's there 
you might not know exactly what it is because your intellect, you know, the one thing I teach in the class is, you know, how to discern your imagination, your intellect from actual higher intelligence. Um, and that's, you know, there's processes to do that because your intellect is always going to try to fucking figure something out. You know what I mean? And it makes you insane. But like for me, yeah, when, when I have a problem, I know that I know that it, it's just something that's stuck in me. You know what I mean? And a lot of times I won't admit that even me, I won't admit that right away because I'm, you know, I get stubborn or I can be like, you know, I'll get wrapped up in the 3d kind of view of it, you know, like, you know, no, it's this motherfucker. It's not my problem. It's his problem. He's being a dick, you know? And then, but it, it doesn't matter because if I go sit down and, and I meditate and I get, and I connect to that higher uh, point of um, awareness, it always comes back to me. There is no, there's nothing. It's like, um, I've had experiences before where uh, I went into a deep, um, well, you could almost call it psychedelic, but a deep, that kind of experience. And it literally just showed me the, a mirror, a mirror of my impressions, my beliefs. Um, every thought and emotion I created at that time reflected back at me, like at me. You know what I mean? So there was no, there was no other people. There was no, and that didn't exist. I was in that kind of a state where everything, I, it was me. Every, it, it, no, it all pointed towards me. And that's not an easy thing to like experience, you know, because it's really humbling, but it's also empowering because then you can be like, whoa, it's me. So why don't I just shift the energies? Right. And that's, then we come back again to, well, why am I feeling this way and all that? And then you got to learn about once again, you know, how to balance your own system. And once you can do that, then you got control again, you know, but yeah, the higher intelligence, you know, I, I, I don't like to use names because every culture has its own name, right? What's the difference? It is what it is. The creation, Shiva, whatever you want to call it, um, can't be explained, right? But it can it can't be explained, but it can be experienced. That's that's all I can really say about it. Very hope cool. that hope that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So when does that program or when do you run that program when are the lectures how long do they take and just give us a quick overview of how the program works yeah so um every monday night at 9 p.m eastern standard time uh we start the lecture okay or the class and it it generally goes between an hour to two hours depending you know um and sometimes in between so uh, I think last night went a little bit longer, we were like two and a half hours. Um, but uh, depending on what kind of practice we're doing too, because there's some practices that we'll do in shorter periods because they need, people won't be able to sit that long doing that kind of a practice in the beginning. It's just not possible. Um, mindfulness is one of those. It's so simple and it's so difficult for so many people to keep your mind or to keep your awareness on one point without having any activity in your mind. Um, so we'll do those in shorter sessions and then, you know, talk and then, and then, so basically usually we'll, we'll start the class. I'll go over kind of what we're going to do that day. We'll um, see if anybody's got any questions. We'll go. I, I always do. I tend to do warm up exercises before my meditations. Okay. Uh, I, I personally do some yoga practices and I'm into Qigong. And so, I know that it's important to get your physical body loose and get these energies and your prana moving through your whole system so you can remove blocks. So then when you sit down, um, when your when your energy is more vibrant, it's much more e it's much easier to uh, get into a relaxed meditative state. So we'll do that a few minutes of warm up. Nothing crazy. You don't have to be a yoga expert or super in shape and flexible, just very simple techniques, but they're very effective. Um, sometimes we'll do some pranayama, depending on what kind of meditation we're getting into. If we're going to prime a certain area of the body, and then we'll go through the process. And then after, we always do a Q and A, and we talk about whatever you know questions you want to have or whatever. Sometimes we'll go into other things, um, and and that's kind of um, how it goes. Um, um, anybody who signs up, you're going to get access to all the uh, classes that have already been done, so you can go back and you can 
check any one of them out. There's, we've done tons of meditation so far. There's a lot of information in there. I mean, honestly, I could do one class three times in a row because it, you know, it, it almost doesn't do it justice to teach it one time. You know what I mean? There's just so much, uh, in it and so much information, uh, related to that. So, um, a lot of times we we will go over stuff that we've done before just to kind of build on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me just say something about that. Exactly. Like how profound that is and what's going to be taught there. Another not secret, but a law of the universe has to be understood where it's basically you can't take something from somewhere without replacing it one way or another. Okay. So there it's, it's about an energy exchange. If you want something, and that, that applies to anything and everything. If you, want, if you want knowledge, you want material objects, you want a certain partner, you want well, whatever, whatever that is, you will not be able to maintain that or genuinely make it yours if you don't have put, put up what is necessary in terms of energy to have it. Now, we live in a, on an economic planet, and a lot of people think spirituality has nothing to do with money. It has, it has nothing to do with money. Money is an illusion. It's energy. That's really what it is. So if you want to genuinely receive something, there must be an energy exchange. Literally, you will not. I've, 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 I tell this people all the time. You know, you can, how many courses do you have that you watched for free, but you couldn't apply it? You couldn't make that knowledge your own. This is like, it doesn't just apply to this program or whatever, whatever you want. Let's, let's say all those YouTube videos, all of this free information that you're learning, how much of that are you really applying? Pretty much zero. Why is that? Because it's not yours. You have not made it yours. And in order to make it yours, you have to exchange the amount of energy necessary for it. It has nothing to do with greed. It has nothing to do with the, Carl has enough income. He doesn't need to do that, okay? It's about an energy exchange that you need. It's not about him or me or whoever. It's about you. So besides that, whatever you teach there is worth, I don't know, you could, you could weigh that in gold. You could weigh that in terms of diamonds. You could weigh that. Like what, what price can you put on literally learning the secrets of the masters, put it like that, or literally becoming, becoming a more evolved being that, that has control over their lives that others would dream of, okay? So this is invaluable. What you're charging is, I think, I don't know, how much, how much is the price? I think it's 97, 97 a month. There you go, 97 a month, that's nothing. Yeah. That's literally nothing. I spend probably more on coffee, even though like I drink decaf, I really, really uh lowered it well it's funny you say that because you know we live in a time right now where where people are 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 spoiled and they don't realize it um what you're offering frank and because you're offering it now i'm here offering uh myself as well my whole self um is something that you know 100 years ago if you knew the right person and were somehow able to travel the world and find a guru or somebody who was legit, maybe they would teach you something, or maybe they would make you sweep the monastery floor for 10 years or do some crazy, you know, and this is true, you know, um, today you can, you can trade digital money and get legit energy transfers from, from, from uh, initiations, right? From across the world, man, normally you'd have to go um and get that and, and do some uh hardcore rituals to make that happen but um it, we live it just in a different time man and it's it's uh i'm grateful for it believe me I, I i realize the magnitude of that it's it's so my always and i hope everybody you know who joins can learn to have this attitude if you can see the value of that then you'll use it much more uh profoundly like you won't waste it right you're not gonna you know being given like a gift in a way so it's like use it that's why i'm using I'm, i've made it my entire life pretty much you know it's like why would i waste something like that that would be foolish that would mean that i would be very ignorant yeah you're right i mean you you pretty much have to be part of the aristocracy 
You have, to, you have to be an aristocrat to study this stuff in the past, literally, because like, people were, were, were working fucking day and night just for bare minimum survival. You know, that's it. They, they were happy to work 12, 12 hours a day fuck, and fucking brutal work. OK, like brutal work um, for enough food in their stomach and a place to sleep at. OK, so that was the reality, the luxury of spending time, even just two hours a week or something like that to study the occult and, and genuine teachings. You had, they, they, everybody in the past that studied that stuff was super privileged and super wealthy. They were part of the, arist they were aristocrats essentially, right? N normal people had no chance, no chance of accessing that stuff. I don't even want to talk about the middle ages before that, right? So that's number one. Number two, we talked about this new age that we're living in. This is like being able to access all of that stuff is also a representation of this of this air quality that we're experiencing okay this age of air where everything becomes much more accessible but at the same time people are going to become overwhelmed because one of the problems is that people have too much of that stuff now and since they can't handle themselves they don't know what to do with all of that right so here's my recommendation for everyone you have higher intellect that is that is that is not overwhelmed it knows truth from lies, absolutely. And that is the feeling that you have in your body. Simple as that. You want to know if something's right or wrong? Just check in with your gut. Check in with your gut. And if you do that, you will absolutely know that was what was being said here was the truth. And if you want this energy, because we're just exchanging frequencies, that's all we're doing. That's, that's what this new age is all about. Okay. You're not going to be sent a, a physical folder, a binder with physical like, like papers. This is not 1984 anymore. Okay. You're going to get sent virtual or digital stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a frequency that's being transferred. A frequency. Now, if you want this frequency, which carries energy, you know what you have to do. Okay. Um, the link to sign up for this program is going to be in the description under this video. And uh, I guess that's all I got to say. Yeah. So um, thanks for doing this, Carl. I really enjoyed this interview. I really got something out of this. Like it reminded, it reminded, me, reminded me of something. It gave me a frequency that I needed. Okay. I'm going to go back to something that... I was experiencing, that was 2010. 2010 was quite a crisis for me. Uh, it was a shit year. It was really bad. One of the worst years of my life. And there was something that I found that helped me progress. It was a vision and a, a video, more or less, that, that connected me to, to a power that was strong enough to, carry me, uh, to, to keep carrying me on. Right. And that's exactly what I, what I need to explore right now. So thanks for that. And uh, thanks for the recordings, Wasi. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Be well. Thank you.